hi guys hope everyone is doing well in this video i will explain about azure sentinel it's a sim tool security information event and management so it will do the log collection log analysis log processing log monitoring and finally instant investigation and alerting tool so coming back to here whatever i am explaining today it's about azure sentinel architecture diagram uh, before going to deep drive into the architecture diagram i want to give small introduction about azure sentinel so azure sentinel renamed as a microsoft sentinel and it is a native cloud service provided by microsoft company so it is a sim tool and it has inbuilt capability of SOAR also, uh, security orchestration and automated response. So that's all about introduction about what is uh, Azure Sentinel part. Uh, let's go and start about architecture diagram. So as per the architecture diagram, you can see there are two components here under threat management and configuration side, two divisions, threat management side and also configuration side. Threat management is mainly for the creating the dashboards. So creating the cases or uh, taking care of the instant investigations and forensic analysis and doing the threat hunting and also, so creating the notebooks, all those will fall under threat management, mainly for the instant investigations and instant response and forensic analysis side. Next one is configuration side. Configuration is basically it's a part of administration. Nothing but log collection, aggregation, parsing, normalization, indexing, querying, and also filtering, and the correlation rule creation. So all those, even automation, all those will fall under the administration. So that is about configuration side. So now I'll explain about all these different types of components, whatever it contains. So let's start with threat management. So first one is the dashboard. So dashboard mainly why we will use. So mainly for the, to verify what's going on and what are the different threats and also what are the different alerts are receiving. So what are the security posture of the organization? And also mainly it can be used for the data visualization. It's a built-in dashboard basically for data visualization. When you say visualization, uh, representing all these particular a logical analysis or uh, overall particular thing in the bar chart or pie chart or comparison chart or trending chart. So it depends. We can do the customization as well. So that, uh, that uh, particular customization is called as uh, dashboard side and mainly it is used a data visualization part basically. Data visualization, that is the importance of the So that is the importance of the dashboard. Uh, next one is cases. The uh, next one is a cases. Uh, so cases can be used aggregation of all the relevant evidence for a specific investigation. Uh, and also mainly it will contain one or multiple security instant alerts receiving part 
and also taking care of the end to end incident investigation. Basically, this one we can call it as case management. Okay. So, nothing but overall incident response or incident investigation that will fall under the cases. So, next tab is hunting. It's very important tab as well. So, you can see here hunting is mapped to so KQL, it's a Kusto query language. So, when you say hunting, threat hunting basically, threat hunting meaning here identifying the threats proactively. So for this one, we can do two different types of hunting. One is manual one. Second one is automated way threat hunting. So automated way threat hunting is obviously based on the correlation rules or based on the use cases. So whatever we configured, it will hit the logic. And finally, alerts will be triggered. So but this particular hunting is based on the hypothesis based, like assumption kind of thing. So we have to use KQL query language. It's a Kusto query language. It's a similar to like SQL language, structured query language. So we have to write a query manually. And according to that one, we have to uh, get the output. So that is hunting. So as I mentioned, everything we have to do. So manual way. Uh, so how to do that one? So basically, first you should aware of. So KQL queries, uh, next one. So you should do the manual analysis side. For example, maybe brute force attack, past 24 hours, what's happened, how many times it has occurred, or maybe impossible traversal attack, okay, or VPN authentication failures from different geographical locations. So all the alerts will come based on the use case or correlation rule. But this hunting is we are doing manual way. Is there any... Uh, use case, it's not heated and uh, logic, it's not heated. And finally, alerts are not triggered. For those scenarios, we have to do threat hunting. Okay. So that is our hunting part here. For this one, as I mentioned, you should be aware of the KQL language. Uh, next one is notebooks. Okay. So notebooks, why we will use uh, these notebooks are mapped to Jupyter. Jupyter based. Okay. So the particular playbooks. Uh, this uh, sorry notebook uh, by integrating with Jupyter notebook. Okay, so Azure Sentinel, uh, what it will do? It extending the scope as well as the capability. Uh, the data was collected. Whatever data we are collecting, okay, so using the logs or data sources. So that particular data can be extended, and uh, we can create notebooks. Additionally, notebooks uh, feature it will combines the uh, programmability, collection of the libraries using machine learning capability and also uh, data visualization as I mentioned in the dashboard and also data analysis. These three features will be done by respective notebooks. I'm repeating once again. So notebooks feature combines the uh, so machine learning capability. Okay, so second one is data is, uh, visualization. Third one is data analysis. All those will fall under the notebooks. Uh, next one is that is about overall threat management tab, whatever it is showing. Let's go and start with configuration or administration. Under the configuration, we have data connectors. And you can see this particular arrow is mapped to the Microsoft and also third party data sources or log sources. So data connector, why we will use for collection of the logs from the different types of log sources. So that may be firewall or proxy or IDS or IPS and so on. Every log source or data source. Okay. So basically this one, if you're comparing with other vendors in IBM Q radar, we can call it as event collector and flow collector. If it's a McAfee event receiver, uh, if it is a HP ArcSight or MicroFocus smart connector or Plex connector or log collector, if it is a Exabeam, it's a log collector, it's Splunk, Splunk forwarders, that may be universal or lightweight or heavyweight. Okay, if it's RSA, it's a log collector. If it's a logarithm, it's a log collector. If it is a, uh, Elk, it is a file bit collector. So vendor to vendor, this terminology will change. On the Microsoft Sentinel site, so respect to log collector name is called as a data collector. Okay, so that is about data connector importance for collection of the logs. Uh, next one is a playbooks. You can see it is 
arrow is representing to the leverage Azure logic apps. Okay. So uh, what is this playbook importance is? It's a collection of the procedures, uh, whatever it can be automatically executed upon the alert is triggered by Sentinel. So meaning here, a playbook, it will uh, leverage related to logic apps, which help and automated and also orchestrate workflows. What are process, procedures and uh, orchestration and workflows or tasks? It will do the automation basically. That is the important. Based on this playbook only, so alerts will be triggered and also that procedure basically it will represent. For example, take malware category of the attack or authentication failure category of the attack or phishing email or maybe flooding or spoofing category of the attacks. So each and every category of the attack playbooks, it will represent the uh, procedure and also it will automatically execute it once the alert will be triggered. So backend it will use either Python or PowerShell uh, programming along with most of the cases. Okay, so it is a, as I mentioned, it will help us to automate and also orchestrate task and also workflows. All these will fall under playbook. It's one of the favorite interview question, guys. Uh, next one is analytics. You can see analytics is mapped to the KQL. Nothing but here, uh, whatever logs we are connecting and also whatever uh, the events we are connecting. So analytics, it will enable to create a custom alerts using KQL language. Okay. So basically in simple words, what is mean by analytics and what is the importance of analytics to create any customized correlation rule or use case, we will use analytics part using KQL language. Okay. So how to define the logic based on the KQL related query. So for example, maybe Russian Ukraine war is going on or maybe uh, Palestine Israel war is going on in that scenario. What will happen? Attackers will try to do the lot of hacking and what are new attacks are happening and by default Azure Sentinel will support a couple of correlation rules or use cases, but regularly what are threat intelligence feeds or news we are receiving uh, from the different types of threat intelligence news channels. For those type of attacks also, we have to create customized correlation rules. That customized correlation rules or custom alerts can be configured under the analytics part. Okay. So uh, if it is IBM Curator, we can create correlation rules under the offensive step. And if it is Splunk, we can create under this Splunk tool using SP programming language. And if it is uh, Exabim directly, it's a part of the correlation rules, Exabim correlation rules. Okay. So that is the way how we can compare with the other vendors, this particular analytics. And next one is a community. So community, it is mapped to GitHub. Basically GitHub is a open source tool. So what is the importance of the community here? Uh, Azure Sentinel community is a page. It is located in the GitHub, as I said, it contains the detections uh, based on the different types of data sources. And also additionally, it will leverage and create alerts and also it will respond back to threats in our environment. So that is the importance. Uh, so is your Sentinel community page, whatever it is hosted in the GitHub site, it contains the hunting the query samples, how to do the hunting of the query samples and also playbooks and other artifacts, all those will fall under the GitHub community page. I am repeating once again. So mainly GitHub community page, it can provide the detections based on the different types of data sources. And also it can be used to create alerts and respond to threats in our environment. And also additionally, uh, it contains the hunting of the sample queries. We can take those samples and we can test in our environment. And also it can be used for the playbooks and also it can be used for the other Arctic pack side. So that is the importance of community page. Uh, finally, workspace. So workspace, you can see it is uh, it is mapped to log analytics part here. Uh, why we will use this one? Uh, basically, log analytics workspace is a container. Uh, so in the Azure Sentinel site, and uh, it includes the data and also configuration information. So what is mean by this one? So basically, whatever logs uh, we are doing the analysis, those logs we can be used for storing purpose, like a storage. So log analytics will provide the storing of the logs or data 
what are we collected from the different types of data sources. If you are comparing with other vendors, Node in IBMQ radar, and also in Exabeam, it is called as a data lake. In Splunk, it is called Splunk storage. And if it is a logarithm, logarithm storage, Macafe, Macafe storage. So it depends. But in our Azure Sentinel or Microsoft Sentinel side, so log analytics or workspace why we will use for storing of the logs uh, based on the whatever retention policy we are making. And also why we have to store the logs. There are two reasons. One is for the auditing purpose. Uh, second, uh, based on the business compliances. Uh, second one is uh, whatever compliances we are using. Uh, so that compliance is based, we have to store the logs. Uh, second one is for the auditing side. So whenever any security uh, external third party auditors will come, they will ask like, uh, uh, show me your past one year data or past year one year incidents and so on. For those scenarios, we have to utilize these uh, storing of the logs as well. And also historical analysis uh, based on the machine learning capability. So that's all about this particular overall Azure Sentinel. Okay. So basically Azure Sentinel has a data connectors to collect the logs and it will complete aggregation, parsing and normalization. Uh, those logs, it will send it to the analytics part here and analytics uh, uh, based on the correlation rule, it will take care of the uh, alert generation as a customized one or inbuilt correlation rule side. So uh, why I'm making this video, like, there are a lot of people are requesting me, please make one of these internal video on how it will work and what. Uh, so what is the architecture diagram? This is the basic architecture diagram. Okay. So that's all guys. Thank you so very much. And also thanks for watching the video.